All right, all right, ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to another great session with the presidential candidate of the fictional Common Sense People's Party. Now, the 2023 presidential election created a very clear divide. During the campaigns, we saw clearly those who placed the good of this country above other sentiments. And we also saw those who would rather see this country in a terrible state than see it prosper under a person who does not share the same faith and language with them. We saw prominent and respected Nigerians sacrifice everything they previously stood for on the altar of primordial sentiments. However, some men stood out. Some men stood for the truth, and the most prominent amongst such men is former President Olusegun Obasanjo. Obasanjo is not a perfect man. We are not saying he's perfect. He has his excesses. He has his faults. But his support for Peter Obi during the last presidential election shows that he truly loves and wants the best for this country. And on this occasion, Obasanjo made a huge statement. Looking at the state of the nation, especially in the wake of recent happenings, Obasanjo has urged Nigerians not to accept the country the way it is. A lot of people are saying, forget about it. These guys have taken over. These guys will never leave this country. They will keep doing whatever they like. But Obasanjo is saying, no, Nigerians must not accept it the way it is. First, it was Rotimi Amechi who challenged the docility of Nigerians. Then obese deputy, Dati Baba Yusuf, told Nigerians that they would never have democracy that they desire through the ballot. Now, it is former president, Olusegu Obasanjo, telling Nigerians not to accept Nigeria the way it is. Before I show you how he said it, let me quickly show you this video of Dino Melaye asking Nigerians to join him to take on the judiciary as they have become the bane of our democracy. See the video. I was an activist. I, I'm an activist. I would remain an activist right, but, even but, before I delve into politics. But how hard are you willing to campaign? Because to achieve what you're calling for, you're going to have to work really hard. We are going to work hard. We have no other country to call our own but this country. We will not allow Mahmoud Yakubu and this commercial interest in the judiciary, people who have commercialized their consciences, will not allow people who have decided for selfish and personal interests to ridicule Nigeria as a nation, to carry on. No, we will not. Well, I because mean, in an unjust society, right. silence is a crime. The issue of INEC is fairly straightforward. You're yeah. calling for the resignation of the chairman. Yeah. How are you going to deal with the issue that you're alleging about the judiciary? It's, 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 it's everywhere, my brother. What happened in Kano, is, is it not there? When you have a verbal judgment and you have a written judgment and there's disparity between the two, is that not enough to give any sane, reasonable character the, 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 the decision to say I have no trust in these people? Today in this country, we have people who are in the Senate who never ran elections and they were certified by courts as senators. Meanwhile, they never participated in any primaries. We are in this country where somebody who came forth became forced. No, no, what I'm ratified trying, by the courts. I understand that. But no, what, I'm what, giving you the indices, yes. the yesterday, the criteria. But what I'm trying to understand is what you are asking of the courts. In other words, you, you, it's clear what you're asking of INEC. Yes. What are you asking of the courts? What I am asking of the courts is simple. I'm not asking of the courts, I'm asking of Nigerians. Right. To take on the judiciary. We must have a judiciary that will be transparent. We should no longer shy away from saying the, the temple of this, uh, judges are sacred. We can No, 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 no. Judges have walked into the gutters. Judges have dropped, dropped their hands in the murky waters of politics. Judges have already shown affinity, have shown support for a particular political party. In a very civilized environment, that should not be acceptable. That should not. Just today, a member of the House of Reps in the United States of America faced the Ethics and Privileges Committee. Mm. And members of his party voted for him to be a spare. Yes, that's the, the, the sixth time vote, in the history. Vote, voted for him to be a spare from the House of Representatives. Right. That is the type of society we want to build, where it is not about self. My brother, if I lose or lost election, 
in a transparent manner. I will congratulate the winner. I will carry my blueprint and give to the to winner and say, let us work together. If the process is transparent. Because after all, it's only for those who take politics and democracy to be a job. But it is supposed to be your contribution to national development. Mm. It's a vocation. It's supposed to be a temporary vocation for how you can help. You heard him. And that was Dino Milai there talking about leading a campaign against the corrupt judiciary. And I remember Dino being the anchor of all APC's campaigns across the 36 states of Nigeria in 2015. Now, he is being rigged out by that same party, APC. And this is the third occasion that he's been rigged out. This is how the APC will turn around to destroy all those supporting them now. Now, this country we did, we go use our eyes, take Siam. Now, let us listen to the words of former president Olusegun Obasanjo. Look at how the papers reported it. Don't accept Nigeria as it is. You have to make some people uncomfortable, ex-president Obasanjo tells youths. Former Nigerian president Olusegun Obasanjo on Thursday urged the country's youths not to accept the situation of the country the way it is, but to make those who need to be made uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Obasanjo added that Nigerian youths must have to be positively disruptive, stressing that any leader who does not have the fear of God is a dangerous leader. The former president who spoke in Abuja on Thursday when he participated in the Bridge Foundation's Emerging Political Leaders Fellowship Program urged Nigerian youths to believe in Nigeria and develop love for the country, pointing out that there was no alternative to their country. He said that knowledge is very important, accurate knowledge. You also need the fear of God and proximity to God. When you are a leader and you do not fear God, then you are a dangerous leader. Wherever you may choose, leadership is very important and the principles are basically the same. A good leader must have certain characteristics. Knowledge is good, but not enough. How diligent are you? What is your level of integrity? What are the values that you cherish? According to him, the way forward for Nigeria was for the nation not to lose. Obasanjo further said, let us get it right and in two years we will forget everything. You have to get involved in everything. You are the leaders of today. If you don't take it now, you will never get it. You have to be positively disruptive. Don't accept things the way they are. You need to make those who need to be made uncomfortable, uncomfortable. Calling for a national discourse on Nigeria's democracy, the former president said, What is Nigeria's history in democracy? What is Nigeria's value? What is our culture in democracy? Let us rethink the context and the content of our democracy. Let's interrogate. Let's ask questions. If you don't do it, who else will do it? Many people don't believe in Nigeria. Don't let us deceive ourselves. If you don't believe in Nigeria, what do you want to talk about? You need to believe in Nigeria. Every country has a history of how they came about. We have to accept that Nigeria is ours. We love it and we cherish it. We have no alternative. Now, this is Obasanjo telling Nigerian youths not to give up on the situation. He's asking them to be positively disruptive. But my take on this is these men have to do more than talk. They have to go behind the scenes and now organize these youths. We have seen many prominent Nigerians because this is an indirect call for revolution. This is an indirect call for the youths to violently demonstrate that things must change in this country, that the right things must be done, that the fraud that is being uh, perpetrated by INEC and judiciary must stop. And all these violent demonstrations and revolution, protests, call it whatever you may, cannot just be done without the backing of men like Obasanjo. And that is why we are saying these men must be the ones to organize these things from behind the scene. The youths are waiting to have their energy harnessed. It may look like the disappointment of the tribunal and Supreme Court judgment dampened the energy of the youths. But I tell you, if men like Obasanjo would lead, 
youths will follow. And I'm not even talking of leading from the front. I'm talking of leading from behind. Dino Melaye has said he is going to start a campaign against the, the, the ineffectiveness and the corruption of the judiciary and INEC. That's a good one. He will be massively followed by the youths of Kogi and it will spread across the country if he is able to keep at it dedicatedly. Anyway, there is a huge possibility that these men are already working on something. The APC has a grand scheme to uh, hold Nigeria down in captivity, to enslave Nigeria and the likes of Abasanjo, Dati, Patutomi, Dele Momodu, ETC, and the disgruntled northern politicians may also be working on a grand scheme to stop the APC. Anyway, make I leave I'm here. Make I still enter town. <laughs> Make I go get some Ogbonge political news. Where will I go like? Why? Because that because of now. Now I did here. So don't go away. Don't go away.